Welcome back to Mom's Pearls. I'm Brenda, and I'm here today with my beautiful sisters, Yolanda and Leah. We are all moms, and we are also sisters in Christ. So today, everyone, it's real crucial. We are continuing on the episodes we've been doing on racism in Today's, um, we are focusing on the bracing for the impact, the real impact on racism and how everyone interacts with everyone just as being human beings. I have a quote I want to read to you. And just ladies, what do you think about this? Because this really touched me. And the quote states that both the dignity and the equality of human beings are traced in scripture to our creation. To presume that one's own race or ethnicity is superior to someone else's is a denial of the fact that all people are created in the image of God. That is okay. so impactful that it brings me to tears. I love that quote. Mm -hmm. I think that it's so important to remember that we were all created equally. At the end of the day, we were all created from the same person with the same design, the same thought in mind, that we were all created under one image. It was about one person. Mm -hmm. So for us to get here now and be looking at skin color and how you're made and how much you make and all that stuff just determines what class, what ethnicity, all those things, I think it's just such a, a disappointment to who we were created to so what we were designed here to do we're here to be our brother's keeper we're here to love each other and treat people the way we want to be treated we're here to bear one another's burdens and when you're talking about that you're talking about white privilege you're talking about white supremacy you know even in um this one quote that i found is that privilege is when you think something is not a problem because it isn't your problem so many times that is the polar opposite. Yeah. That quote is the polar opposite of what Christ was all about and what Jesus is all about. He didn't come down, like he said, I didn't come for those that were well, I came for the sick. Like at the end of the day, we're supposed to be concerned about each other. We're supposed to be able to relate to each other across all color lines, across all gender associations. I mean, male, female, we should still be able to get along. You should respect <laughs> woman just like I respect you as a man you should respect me as as a black person just like I respect you as a white person I think it's just so unfortunate and when you think about white supremacy you're thinking about a group that thinks they're better that think they're better strictly because I'm white and if you're not white I you're not as good as me and that's the unfortunate thing about white supremacy and that's what we really have to kind of fight against we have to really say hey we're all equal we're all God's creation we're all you know on the same level and on the same playing field and even when I I think about it a lot of times with this whole idea of white supremacy and racism. It's all against God. It is anti-God. It's not why Jesus died. It's not why he came with her. He came for everybody. He didn't come for the white supremacists. He didn't come for white people. He didn't come for Asians, for black people. He came for everybody, for Jew, for Gentile. He came for everybody alike because he loved us all. That's the whole reason that Jesus died. And so we have to be really careful, you know, when we're talking about racism and white supremacy and being Christians and believers and things like that, we have to be really careful um, how we cross those lines because it, it can get very dangerous. Even my husband and I, we were talking the other night and he was just like, you know, you think about it, but I'm like, they don't look at us, they don't look, white White supremacy does not look at black people as human beings, you know, just like we've read in our book stamp that we've been reading. They don't look at us as human beings, you think about it. Um, Michael Vick, he went to prison for all that time, you know, but you've got Emmett Till, you've got Trayvon Martin, and they're, 
the people who did this to them are walking free, living their best life. He was dealing with dogs, you know, they say man's best friend, but they really literally take it like, oh, we'll, we'll send humans, we'll send black people to prison, we'll punish them or whatever, but our dogs are precious, they're sacred, they're this. And so I think it just gets to be really dangerous when we start talking about white supremacy and one group being better than another, even with that study that the teacher had did um, with the students, it's really, really old and she made one group better than the other, yeah, you know, yeah. and they literally started to act like they weren't as good and feels good, but then when the shoe yeah. was on the other foot, because they're children, they were quick to reciprocate. And I think as Christians, that's the one thing that we can't afford to do. We can't afford to reciprocate. When it gets to be our turn to be on top of him, oh, well, you were ugly to me, now I'm about to get you back. I'm, that's not what um, Jesus is about either. But ladies, I want to hear from you guys. I want to get your perspective. So Yolanda, go ahead. What do you think about this whole thing? I love both of those quotes. And the lady you were talking about, her name was Jane Elliott. I studied her when I was getting my degree in, in counseling. And so that was a big deal for, for us to discuss that, her study. And she continued to follow those children into adulthood. And that study continued on. And that was, it's a very powerful study. If you have, have not heard or seen about it, look her up on YouTube, Jane Elliott. And those quotes that you ladies mentioned, <sighs> privilege, it doesn't bother you if it doesn't affect you. And that's a huge thing. Oh, well, you know, when they say, well, it's not on us because it's, it's, it's a black person's thing. So you guys should just let that go. No, it's hard to let something go that you've experienced. And as a mental health note, when your ancestors endure things, that stuff gets passed down into your bloodline. So it becomes part of who you are internally. So it's not just something you can just drop off, like you drop a piece of paper into the trash and forget about it. Because once that thing is passed down generation to generation, it becomes ingrained. So all the oppression that we receive and all those who were in the oppressor seat, those genes those that stuff also is ingrained and is passed down from generation to generation so it's not just something you can just drop off you have to be intentional about treating people as you want to be treated like god commanded us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves we have to be intentional about loving ourselves so we in turn have to be intentional about loving our neighbors and just because something doesn't affect you because we are not living in italy or in iraq and we are not in the wars doesn't mean it shouldn't affect us as humans to watch our brothers and sisters be affected by it. We still it doesn't have to matter. Be That's right. We still have to be concerned. That's what right. Jesus calls us to do, to be concerned no matter what. Our heart, it still has to tug at our heartstrings. Sister Brenda, why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit more about that and then bring us into how God relates into this whole issue. Go ahead. God relates into every aspect of our lives. We as Christians have to realize that, remember that in every walk we walk and every breath we breathe, every thought we think every day that God gives us to be here on this earth. Mm -hmm. I love this book, people, everyone. That's why I love this, about this book. I'm so thankful we found out about this book. Um, to find out when he mentioned that the poor whites and the blacks were trying to come together to, to bind, to help each other. But once again, the fake news, the rich white people said, no, you're better than them. They're beneath you. Come with us. We will do for you. And which was a lie because rich white people don't like poor white people, but they tell the rich, white, the poor white people, oh yeah, you just as good because you're white. So you are better than them. They, that's another spin in the narrative again to get what they want. And we are seeing this now after going through four years of fake news, of being lied to. And that's why white supremacy is at an all time high again. It's just like an, an explosion. But we have to pray to God every day and look towards Him and Jesus to get this back under control. We do. It's very scary. We have to make sure that we're linking up with God every day because that's yes. the only way that we do what we're supposed to do. And like you mentioned in these scriptures, we treat others the way that we want to be treated. We respect our sisters and our brothers, regardless of their skin, regardless of their class association, 
all of that stuff. So, sister, then I'm going to turn it over to you. Go ahead, lady. Well, thank you, my sister. I have, I want to start off with a uh, scripture from the Bible. And it's Malachi 2.10. It states, have we not all, all one father? Have not one God created us? Why do we mistreat every other man and do wrong to our brother? It's against the covenant of God. He's our father. He created all of us. But yet, we treat us each other wrong. I don't like you because your nose is pointy. I don't like you because your skin color is, is different. I don't like you because you think you're cute. We don't even have a reason. We just make up a reason. Oh, you're poor. You're beneath me. It's just all in our head. But yet, we love God. We don't love God. If we're paying attention and if we're really listening to the scriptures and what the Bible says, if we take time to pray and have relationship with God and his son, how can we in our souls treat our fellow brothers and sisters who walk this earth regardless of skin color, religion, whatever race background like this is see you come from how can we mistreat each other what do you think about that sister yolanda well you have certainly ruffled some feathers when you tell some christians that they do not love god okay we go to church we do our church <laughs> duties we serve on the usher board we do what it is we're supposed to do when we come to church but it's the heart god is searching for the heart if you are not, if you don't love God in your heart, then you're not going to love your neighbor. You're not going to treat them how you want to be treated. You're not going to treat them with the esteem that you too would want to be treated with. And I remember the story about the Tower of Babel. So they were building the tower to get to heaven. And what did God do? He dispersed all of their languages, but he did not pin one ab above another or one against another. He separated them because they were coming together to spin the narrative under wrong pretenses to get to heaven, to do the same thing that Satan did for getting kicked out, for thinking that they were above God, that they can be on the same playing field as God. That is the separation that God did so that people can, so that they were put themselves in a position of danger. The tower was, in the, was gonna eventually tip over because there's only so much support you can build to get that high. But that was the separation. It was not to put, one against another or one above another but man the white supremacy so it goes back to our last episode our first episode they went and they wanted something that they did not have they wanted the skill set they wanted this money they wanted to spin this narrative that africans black people were savages and there was another person who wrote a book his name was edgar rice burrow he discussed tarzan well spinning the narrative is the theme that I'm seeing in these last two episodes. They're spinning the narrative in their favor. So it's, it's almost, it's, it's actually quite frustrating if I'm honest that we, to have this because knowing now what I didn't know and the, the flip side of the history, it's frustrating that we grew up with these images of ourselves because when they're spinning the narrative, they're teaching it to us as well. So we are being taught to turn against our race. Oh, we were savages. We were apes. We weren't humans. We were a quarter of a person. It took five people to make one man. It was. And you, you, you're so right. You're so point on with that. And I must say, I'm a person. My and I grew up on watching Tarzan. That was the normal. On Saturdays, we would watch those movies. And that is dead on. Now reading this book, I do see it in a whole different way. What do you think about this, Sister Leah? I can't stand Tarzan, okay? <laughs> it's just clear. I didn't ever really like it to begin with as a child, but after reading this whole book and the whole idea, it's just like stuff like that. Curious George, just let's not go down the list. What we're talking about stuff where they slide that foolishness in and you have to be like, Okay, cut the TV off, baby, because that ain't for us. Like that's not, and it's 
everywhere. You can't get a commercial. You know, I was watching a hot dog commercial. And I was like, why are we not in that? We like hot dogs. We're American. What's the whole premise? But there's a real premise behind the idea that you are not American enough. And you are not, you know, you don't fit into this. You can't come over here. And it is, it, like you said, it's frustrating. It's hurtful. You know, and there's a meme that I saw. It said, Christ and racism don't mix. You can't say, I love God and hate his creation. And I think that's just where we are. I think that's something that that's n- nobody is willing to say to everybody. And everybody, mm-hmm. let's just be clear, Christ and racism don't mix. You can't yes. say, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, but I don't like black people. I don't get down with people of color. I don't get down with those groups that make less than me. I'm, it doesn't work like that. Jesus yes. died for everybody. God loves everybody you can't pick and choose and still say oh i love god i'm a christian i'm a believer you are so on point with that sister it's baffling it's baffling I, ladies thank you so much there's so much we can say so many things god's putting in our heads and our mouths to say but on that note let's now go hear the spiritual pearl of the week Yay. Ladies, 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 y'all bringing it. You hear me? Lord and Jesus, he, he already knew this was going to happen. See, in John 15 and 18, he said, if the world hates you, know that, is, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Okay? Now that's oh. a lot. He already knew this. Racism is a sin against God and the image bearers he loves. God's word is blunt. If you show partiality, you are committing the sin and and convicted by the law as transgressors. That's James 2 and 9. This Bible, y'all. Now, partiality means to show favoritism or prejudice, to treat one person as inherently better than another. The Bible considers all such forms of prejudice to be a sin against God and our fellow man because God shows no partiality. Acts 10 and 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So look, we're created in his image. All of us, what y'all fail to realize, y'all, we all got some ancestry thing going on because we all came from Adam and Eve with plan. So with that being said, this has got to stop. But we got to keep praying. We got to keep pushing, keep fasting. Because God, at the end of the day, the good is going to override the evil anyway. You get what I'm saying? God is the one that's going to take care of this. But it hurts in the process of going through it. We shall, as she said, we shall overcome. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Ladies, you guys are awesome. Keep bringing it because I'm loving every bit of it. So I know if everybody feeling like I'm feeling Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, look, there's an answer. Y'all bringing the answers. You're putting it out there. And I really enjoy this. But God, at the end of the day, he shall always reign. He shall mm-hmm. always reign. So keep doing it. And back to you, ladies, you guys, just and keep doing what you're doing. Enjoy. All right. All right. <laughs> Minister Shayla, thank you so much for breaking the Bible down to it, for bringing us those scriptures, for tying it in. Sister Leah said, there's no Christ in racism. And Minister Shayla brought the scripture to back it up that said, listen, honey, there is sin in racism. There's no Christ in it because it is all full of sin. And like Sister Brenda said, if you love God, you can't hate your brother, no matter the color of their skin. There is a scripture, you can't love God and hate your brother. You just can't. You can't, it's, it's not something you can do because there is sin that's the underlying thing in, in hate. So if there's hate, you are negating the love that you proclaim for God. And my portion of this that we're going to discuss now is the relationships. So I threw out the, the Tarzan narrative earlier because it was spun based off of a Black man. So they want to spin the narrative yet again to continue to continue to put the white man above the black man. Even if the black man is beginning to succeed, they throw the white man out there to say, hey, we have to knock him down off his block. He's getting too big for his britches. Because what happens is 
once a black man begins to go up a few levels, then we as a culture, as a nation, as blacks, we say, oh, we can do better. And then the whites start seeing, they look and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's unacceptable. We have to bring them down. So there was this boxer, Jack Johnson. He was, he was knocking them all out. He was laying them out clean on their backs. They brought a white boxer out of retirement to try to take him off of his spot. And he took him out as well. This black boxer, he even had a, a white woman on his arm, y'all. And you know, that was it. That was a tipping point for them. This black man destroying everybody who stepped in the boxing ring, including their white men. And then he had a white woman on his arm. So the plots began to thicken and the narratives were being spun. That's how Tarzan came about to show the white supremacy of the man and to make sure that the white woman was seen as precious. So they had the white man to be physically larger than the white, than the black man. So you see how all of these narratives, visuals are being, um, are being put out there to show how they envision black men smaller than the white man. The black, the white man had to be a giant. The white woman was pursued as precious. So she had to be protected at all costs. So the fact that she was on the arm of this black man was a problem. So he was, she had to be protected by this white man. So they made him large like a giant to crush the black man, which they couldn't do in real life. I'm just, I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna go further into that, but it's how we perceive our relationships within one another. So how do we see the, the whites against the whites? How is there, you know, the relationship between the blacks and the blacks and then the blacks mixing with the whites? We know there's black on black crime. We are not here just to, to negate that. We're not talking about white supremacy in order to say there is no black on black crime. We know it, it's there. It's also a fight we're in at the same time. So can you see how there is so much of a struggle in the black community because we have to fight against white supremacy as well as the black on black crime. So the things that are going on in our community and the things that are within our own selves and then the things that are going on in our community from other races. It's not just a black on black thing and a white on black thing. It's so much trauma that the black community is fighting to come up out of. And that's what makes it so tough. And it seems like an unending fight, fighting against this narrative that has been spun to make us look like the savages that they want people to see us as so we can continue to be deemed as less than. We are not less than. We were made in the image of Christ. We were made in his image, just as the white man, just as the Hispanic, just as the Asian, as the Middle Eastern. No one race was made better than the other. So why do we put this on ourselves? Why is this being put onto us? In the books that we read, it says that we were savages. The stamped book is pointing out the flaws and the narrative that was spun on us, that was spun against us, not in our favor, but in favor of the white man. And we want to shed lights on the inconsistencies and in the narrative that they put on us. So ladies, I'm gonna open this floor up and I'm gonna throw it to you first, Sister Brenda. What are your thoughts on the relationships that are in the community? Um, well, you know, it's, it's been known that it's divide and conquer. From the time mm -hmm. they brought our ancestors over, divide and conquer. They pit us against each other. When they had the slaves, if one was getting beaten, the overseer didn't do it. The, they had one of the slaves do it. And if you didn't beat them hard and really inflict pain, then you will be on the other side of that pole and you will be getting beat. And then they made us stay in there and watch the beatings. All of that does something to your psyche. Absolutely. And they, it, that's where we started. Oh, I'm gonna tell on you, you know better not do that. Master gonna be mad. You, it's survival. You're trying to survive. You can't be mad at a person when they are trying to live and make it through another day in such a horrific way of life. It's to today. 
we are still being pitted against each other with a lot of us aren't being smart enough to get away from that. I have a penny and you have a dime. I'm busy trying to get that dime from you. It's instead of asking you, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, Yolanda, teach me, show me. I want to be on that same level where you're at. We mm -hmm. have to learn to start um, looking and, and start working together with ourselves. And then with um, going out and working with other races and other people and people who have different cultures and just being understanding of, of one another. That, that, is, that is the thing. Me, I, I get along with everybody. And I was raised that way. So don't, you don't do it just because they're white and I can't get along. No, it don't work that way. You know, it looks like she's freezing up. We're going to go ahead. And Sister Leah, before we throw it to you, there was this video. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a PNG commercial. And it's about the life of this, of this Black man. He goes into various stages of his, of his day, goes shopping into the coffee shop. And in all the various places, he's being looked at in a certain light. But then the final clip of the video, he's a judge. And it just, the, the video was so impactful because it shows not only how different races view us, but it also shows how we also view ourselves. And it's, and like I just said, it's the narrative that we have to change, that we have to look out for and spin it back to shine the light that there are inconsistencies in the narratives that we were being told. All right, Sister Leah. You know, there's too much to say in this little bit of time about this issue. There's a lot of distrust in the Black community amongst each other. We're fighting ourselves internally. We're fighting against um, our the other colors around us to prove that we're better, to prove that we're worth it. And then we're also fighting amongst each other. You know, just at the end of the day, they want to say crabs in a barrel. They say all kinds of things about us. And so we're fighting against that, fighting to prove that I'm, I'm worthy of their trust. I'm worthy of us to be able to be in a relationship together. You don't have to look at me and feel a certain type of way. Oh, she's this, oh, she's that colorism. There's so many things. The lines are so, um, there. there's just so many different areas when you're talking about this. So I just think it's just one thing to remember that the Bible says about the tongue. You know, it can be used as a double-edged sword. You know, we can slice and we can heal. And it's just so important that racism and, and, and all races and all colors are aware of that and that we are conscious when we speak of what comes out and how we carry ourselves because we don't know how what we say will affect the person next to us. Absolutely. That is so very true. So we have to be mindful of the things that we say and the, thing, and the way that we act around people because it can be perceived in a different way. We are here to shine light on these different narratives so that we can say and we can show that there is a different light. We were not savages. We were not swinging from trees when they came to Africa to rescue the black man, the black woman, when they were taking our people away and breaking up families and homes. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. That might be in another <laughs> segment. We do not have time to get into that one, but let's just be mindful that, that the narrative was spun so that not only that the white people can see us in a different light, so that we too would turn away and so see ourselves in different lines. They wanted us to assimilate. They want us to be more like them and to leave our culture behind. That's not what we're here for. We, are, we were created for a reason. We were placed in that culture for a purpose. And we have to remain who we are, remain true to ourselves, remain true to thine own self. Don't throw away your culture to assimilate into another. We can live peaceably. God wants us to live peaceably. And on that note, I'm gonna turn it back over to Sister Brenda. Mom's